Hello and welcome to the uh, Pale Wizard YouTube channel. My name's Tim and this is Dan. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about our 50 Years Later um, Sparks tribute album to the original Kimono My House album from 1974. Um, we've just received our vinyl copies this week, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So this is our uh, our own version of 50 Years Later. You want to tell us a little bit about how we go about the, doing the 50 Years Later series? Okay, so this is the fourth in the series of 50 Years Later. <clears throat> the concept behind it is we pay tribute in full to an album that's turning 50 years, an album that we regard highly. Not necessarily always kind of huge classic albums in, you know, in Not always, the no. public consciousness. No. Sometimes we go a little bit left field. For instance, last year we did uh, an album by the band Budgie from Wales. The first one was Killer by Alice Cooper. Second was Ziggy Stardust. Uh, obviously that was a massive album. And this year uh, we've chosen Kimono My House, or Tim's chosen this year actually Kimono My House, because I got to choose Budgie last year. And the concept is that we get a, a bunch of bands from around the world. We try to keep it in the kind of rock vein, but we do kind of step outside that sometimes yeah we sort of push the envelope a little bit um we kind of have to with sparks i think to get it that's what's been interesting about this one it is, i think yeah and it comes out 50 years to the day of the original that's quite important to us it's been really fun this one's been a really interesting one to do and this one comes out may the 1st on pale wizard records you can get it from our website palewizard.co.uk or the band camp page just search for pale wizard so yeah there's uh 10 tracks on the vinyl um, for the CD, which uh, is still being manufactured, that should be with us in the next week or so, um, we've got two bonus tracks. Now we've tried to keep it to the Kimono My House era for the bonus tracks, so we've gone with um, Barbecue Tea and Lost and Found for the bonus tracks, which I think were on the 40th anniversary version of Kimono, which would have been well, 10 years ago now. So for the actual tracks on here, um, this town ain't big enough for the both of us, Foxjaw. Um, so Foxdoor are a band that's very close to our house on this label. Um, so the first uh, band we ever actually released on Pale Wizard. Yes, yeah, so going back some years, um, I've, I've known Josh from the band for a very long time. And I've known the band since they started. And to give them a little bit of a leg up, I uh, offered to do their first single. Uh, so we released that on vinyl. That's the very first thing we did on Pale Wizard. In fact, it was the only thing I intended to do on Pale Wizard. This was before my time, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was so just starting out. Just yeah. a bit of fun, really, because I've done some releases for the band I'm in, and I just wanted to help them out. So I said I'd do a run of I can't remember five hundred or something singles on ten inch vinyl, which was really cool. Collectors items now as well. Well, it is. Yeah, yeah I mean they've gone on to be signed, and they've played download festival tours all around Europe. You know, they're a fantastic band. Uh, so I was happy for them to, you know, if you love them, set them free, let them fly off into the sunset. So it was great that they agreed to do probably what is the biggest obviously most well known most well known song isn't it on song there? probably by Sparks mm -hmm. full stop and what they've done with this is is really cool actually they they kept the original spirit of the song but it sounds like a Foxjaw song if you've heard any Foxjaw material before they have a bit of a kind of carnival -esque. they do they have a very sort of kooky kind of heavy yeah it's it's heavy very heavy. Very, very heavy. Sort of crushingly heavy in places. But very musical. But it has, yeah. It's and it's really not a million miles away from the original. They changed the structure in parts, especially towards the end. Mm. Um, added a little bit in, um, but it, it, I think it does it um, does it justice, which is what's important with uh, a cover of a song like that, which is so iconic. And yeah, it's always hard so to know. Well known. It's always hard to know what to do with the song as iconic as this town. Foxjaw done a really good job of making it sound like Sparks and making it sound like Foxjaw. So uh, I really enjoyed what they did on that. The, I thought the production was brilliant and the playing by all the band members was uh, fantastic. But yeah, I'd, I'd urge you to check out their albums because they're such a good band. So moving on to the second track, which was the um, also the second single and probably one of the other most well-known songs from this album, Amateur Hour, which was taken on by Tony Reid uh, from the band Moss Generator in the USA. 
Um, and we worked with Tony numerous times now, haven't we, over the last few years. Um, and he always comes up top for us. Um, yeah, to, to Tony, yeah. Uh, I've known him from the band Moss Generator. I actually played with him before I got to know him personally. Our band played a gig in Bristol with them. I think it was about 2016, 2017. It was them and Elder. It was a fantastic show. Uh, but since then, he mastered something that they, our band were involved with on the Ripple label, which was the split that we did with a band called Howling Giant. And he mastered it, and we were so blown away by the master because it was such a kind of departure from the, the mixes that we'd given them. It really blew our socks off. And then, obviously, we spoke to him when we did the Kate Bush cloud busting. And I just sent him uh, the song to see he, if he'd master it for us. It turns out he was a massive Kate Bush fan. Next thing we know, he's done his own Kate Bush song and we released a split single with him. And since then, we've done tons of stuff. We've, we've released Which was it. probably the first thing we released when I joined the label, wasn't it? The Beyond was it? The Pale, was, was it? it? Or was it the Acoustic Thunderhoof? It was one of the two. Oh, I can't remember. They were both around the same time, weren't they, I think? But since then, we've done a live album for Moss Generator. We've done a new album by them on CD. He's mastered most of our stuff. He, he masters all the 50 Years Later series. And Tony's kind of appeared either by himself or with Moss Generator on all of them, hasn't he, I think? Apart with from with Budgie. He wasn't Budgie, on Budgie. Yeah. He, ma he mastered Budgie. But he mastered it, yeah. But well. He actually requested this song. Where when, I, yeah. when I told him we were doing Sparks, <laughs> again, it turns out he's obviously got good taste, Tony, because he's like, oh, I'm a massive Sp Sparks fan. I want to do Amateur Hour. So... Yeah. Yeah. So we don't usually say, yeah, yeah, just you go ahead and have that one. We like to give bands a choice of a few and then we sort of allocate. But with this one, there was a couple of bands, Tony and another one, that particularly wanted a certain track. Mm. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. Actually, yeah, it turned out quite well, this album, didn't it? Because there wasn't too many clashes. and Because we we tend to ask the bands, can you give us like top your top three picks? Yeah. And obviously, the, the way we choose the bands, I mean, you were kind of um, in the lead of fine in the band I was on project. recruitment for this one wasn't I really so <clears throat> we were I th I, it, you know correct me if I'm wrong but you were, we were fairly lucky in terms of most bands got the song they wanted to do I think pretty much everybody did to be fair yeah I mean it come down to the last few obviously you're giving people a choice between yes. four songs or three songs and they, I think everyone pretty much got what they wanted but Tony turned this song around in yeah, he, Days. yeah, he did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that is brilliant. I get the impression he's he's got a catalogue full of of covers that he's got in various stages of production. So <laughs> Tony, I, in my eyes, is the hardest working man in rock, uh, or certainly our side of the the rock spectrum. Yeah, he's so busy. He's in so many bands, all top notch stuff as well. Isn't it? There's no filler with Tony. It's all quality stuff. He runs his own studio out in Port Orchard in Washington. Uh, and he's he's so prolific. You, I mean, you could really dig deep into Tony's collection. But I, I thought what he did on his vocal is really good because if you try and sing along to this, it's almost impossible. It is for me anyway. Hmm. It's really up there, mm -hmm. especially and then then you have got the key change. Yeah, and it goes up again. I tried to sing along to it in the car and I just couldn't get anywhere near it. <laughs> it's almost well, got a bit of a Aussie. Ozzy Osbourne kind to of, the vocal. kind of has, isn't it? And it's a real sort of foot stomping version of the track as well. Mm. Real, real sort of head nodder, isn't it? So. Mm. Up next we have Earl of Hell. So they did um, Falling in Love with Myself again. So these chaps are from, is it Edinburgh, they're Scotland? From, yeah, they're Scottish, yes, right. Yeah. Edinburgh, yeah. yes. And I've, I've known of Earl of Hell for a few few years now. It's one of those names that you've seen around the scene for a long time, I think. Isn't I'm it? pretty Hell. sure we were speaking to them about something in the, in the not too distant past. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've really been um, plying their trade quite heavily so they've been doing a really good job of working the live circuit I believe they've got a new album coming out yeah I believe so yeah uh, I, don't I believe they've been quite influenced by Sparks they said when they're uh, because they've uh, oh what the new material yeah, that's right yeah that's interesting so we'll, we'll yeah, look forward to hearing that and seeing uh, if we can it's a, this is a hard bits. song that they did as well it is it's like a crazy waltz in places isn't it so it's got those uh, real sort of out there moments I gotta be honest of all the songs 
that were allocated, this was the one I had most doubts about. Okay. I couldn't quite understand how Earl of Earl of Hell would yeah, do it. Yeah. But they have. They really have. Especially like the beginning sounds like a Black Sabbath song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very, one of the very heavier clever. sounding ones on the record, isn't it's it? It's very clever, but it's actually very true to the original. Mm -hmm. um, so I, they've really put some thought into this song. I was really impressed. Yeah, vocals are great as well. It is. It's a it's a top notch cover. So track number four, um, Here in Heaven by Josiah. Now when I mentioned earlier on that um, Tony wanted Amateur Hour, um, Josiah were one of the first handful of bands that I contacted for this Sparks EP. And Matthew from, from Josiah got back to me straight away, pretty much saying, uh, yeah, if you want Josiah on this, we'd love to do it, but we want to do Here in Heaven. <laughs> so they clearly had <laughs> some kind of... Uh, so where, where had you heard <laughs> the name Josiah? So I, yeah, again, they've been around for a, a long, long time. They have, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, for it's a, like early two thousands or something. Yeah, around then. Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a while, and the, and the name it's not a band I've listened to a great deal over the years, but I've had a track here and there. Uh, I've seen the name crop up so much on the live scene. Didn't didn't they have a spell, go away for a bit and then make a I comeback? Think they did. Yeah, yeah. So they're based in the Midlands, aren't they? They're from Leicester, is that right? Leicester, I think. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. a name I've seen knocking around for yeah. years. And they've got quite a reputation as well. Yeah, they certainly have. Yeah, um, but yeah, they've obviously come back into the live scene quite, quite in a big way um, in recent years because I've seen the name cropping up mm. on sort of festival lineups. And they've done some really big shows in people. London, haven't they? They have. Yeah, yeah. And you can kind of hear why with what they've done with this track because here in heavens, this is my favourite song on the original album. Is it? And yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, and they've uh, they've really, really, really done a great version of it. I'm no, it, it's, it, it's, it's it's hard to. I, I wouldn't think. I was expecting the Here in Heaven to, to let me down a little bit because mm. I love the song so much, and it, it's actually exceeded my expectations in a great way. So mm. I was very happy with what with what we got back from them. I believe they've got a new album out or a single. Um, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll put some links to all the uh, the bands that are featuring on their social media in the comments below. Yeah, it's um, definitely a band you can dig deep out, with. Yeah, they've got a, you know, a decent discography, haven't they? They've been mm. going for a while. Mm. And, um, yeah, quite sort of spaced out kind of... Uh, not the heaviest band in the world, but, yeah, worth a listen, for sure. <laughs> Okay, so track number five on Kimono My House 50 Years Later. Um, so thank God It's Not Christmas, this band Sergeant Thunderhoof. Do you know do you know who they are? Have you heard of them? I do. Um, so how did you come to <laughs> how did you come to cover Thank God It's Not Christmas by Sparks for well, this? How did as, that happen? As is usually the case with these 50 Years Later releases, Thunderhoof, we like, we like to contribute. It's not a rule that we have to be on every release. No. Um, but we do. We are the, the band, <laughs> the, <laughs> the house band. We, we fill in where we needed, <laughs> and thank God it's not Christmas. Was a song that I, I got the impression not many other people wanted. Uh, not so much that is. It, I kind of wanted you guys to do it. Really? Yeah. It I has. Kind of, it has got a bit of a festival Christmas vibe. Yeah. It even has. though it's not about that. It's not. No. It's, an, it's, it's well. It's almost an anti-Christmas song, isn't it? In, in its message, in a way, but. Um, yeah, I've, I've still yet to figure out what the what the actual message mm, message, was, message of the song is. That sparks all over, isn't it? It's uh, some very dense meaning to a lot of the. Uh, uh, we we had a lot of fun doing this one. It was um, it wasn't easy to make it our own. No, we we had to change. There's a wit. There's a kind of the, uh, a guitar line at the beginning that never happens again, and we thought it'd be nice in the to, intro to the song. Yeah, yeah. so we thought yeah. it'd be nice to bring it full circle at the end and we introduce that as a kind of heavy crescendo and that works really well yeah i'm quite happy with that i like to think that when sparks hear this if they ever hear it ron will go oh why didn't i think of that bringing that back <laughs> at the end there like that <laughs> because it is it works really well kind of like as a you know 
full stop to the song at the end. There. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it makes you realise how good Russell's voice is when you try to cover a Spark song. It's really up there. Yeah, and it's not all in falsetto either. It's that's kind of like his head voice, his chest voice. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was it was a really fun one to do. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think we did a pretty good job. I'm it's pleased, I'm pleased tell, really. with it. I'm very pleased with it. It's um kind of because it's the longest song on the album. I kind of thought it's the one that Fun Thunder Hoof maybe should have, and they can put their own sort of spin on it because all your songs are like forty five minutes long, aren't they? So <laughs> yeah, I thought that it would be the most suitable, and um, I could sort of hear Mark playing that, mm. that riff in it. Um, and it, yeah, it's worked out again brilliantly for for me anyway as a Sparks fan. I'm very pleased with it. Cool. So track number six was Hasta Manana Monsieur. Mm-hmm. Is that how it's pronounced? Hasta Manana. Hasta Manana. 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 Monsieur. And this was taken care of by the band Crooked Tongue, who are, again, they're quite local lads to us, south- southwest of England. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've worked with um, them in the studio. Fantastic lads, really good band as well. They're, they're working on an album. Well, I think they finished it right now, actually. So I don't know when that's coming out. But they've definitely been carving a bit of a niche for themselves. Absolutely. Very melodic band. They, they've got some, you know, rock kind of underpinnings to the band. But... I don't know. I don't know how I'd describe their music, really. It's not a million miles away from what Fox Jaw do, is it? In a way, it's yeah. It's, it doesn't have the kind of not car- heavy. Doesn't have the carnival yeah. thing of Fox Jaw. No, no. They're very cool, crooked song. What they've done with this song, I think, is really incredible. And this is the one I think might kind of split opinion more than anything else on this album because it, it is great, but it is it's a total a rework. completely different song. It's really clever. Mm-hmm. Very clever. I, I, w- I was speaking to, um, is it Ollie? Yeah. And he was saying, even the night the night before the studio, they he couldn't figure out what to do with the song. And so he, he completely just ditched trying to cover the song and came up with a new song for it. Obviously using all the lyrics. And it's put a completely different... All the lyrics were there, aren't they? Even oh, no, it's, it's yeah. you know, structure-wise, it's pretty similar, isn't mm-hmm. it? But... And it's the the way that the timbre of the voice and the, the the phrasing, for me, puts a whole new perspective on the lyrics. Yeah, which yep. I think is really clever. I think they've done a really good job on this. Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's probably my favourite song on it. Weirdly. Yeah. In terms of just it, it sounds like it could be on the Crooked Tongue album. Indeed. To me. Yeah. I mean, if you if you just heard an instrumental version of it, you wouldn't be able to no. place that as this is a, a Sparks cover, let alone for this song. In particular, you are right. It's probably going to split opinion. I love it. I think there's going to be some people that absolutely love it because it's, you know, what what it is. They've changed the song completely, and there's going to be some people that hate it because yeah, they've changed the song completely. <coughs> so, we, yeah. you know, you can't win with, with, with the, <laughs> these albums. We do. You can't win because when, when someone tries to do it too faithfully, people say, "What's the point? You've just done it faithfully." Yeah. And then when you go left field, they'll say, you've completely ruined this. You know, so that's why we say to the bands, look, you do what you want with it. You've got to keep the lyrics the same. We're very particular about that. No change in lyrics, no swearing, unless there's swearing on the original. Apart from that, though, it's, it's a really free reign. And that's what's exciting about these projects. Exactly. In Crooked Tongue, they, there's, there's spoken word parts in there, isn't there, where, mm. where they've changed it up. So. It's really clever. With the only ways I knew the show Okay, so track number seven, um, The Wonderful Talent is an Asset. Um, this is done by Silvery. Uh, Silvery are a band which I pretty much found from going on the Sparks fan pages on Facebook and asking the fans, is there a, a, a band you'd like to hear 
cover Sparks. And obviously we had all different kinds of silly suggestions, along with some great ones. You know, people were asking for Morrissey because he's a Sparks fan. and That would have been great. I don't think the budget would stretch to Morrissey. Oh, I would have loved that. Would have been interesting, wouldn't it? I don't think he's... Dealing with him might have been a bit difficult. Yeah, yeah, very true. But um, along with all the, uh, you know, the wild suggestions, there were a few... um, a few good ones, and a name that came up numerous times was Silvery. Mm. So I gave them a listen, and um, I thought they'd be perfect for it because they're clearly massively influenced by Sparks. But they do a, a bit like Foxtrot have that kind of carnival mm. sort of uh, circus sound. So yeah, we uh, well I approached them and they were well up for it because they've done a few covers in the past and uh, and they, they've been going a while. Waiting, they, yeah, they've been going since a uh, similar time to Josiah, I think. Wow. So, yeah, a while. I think they were sort of quite well regarded by some of the, the indie mags back in the day. Mm. Um, the NME kind of crowd. Because they are a bit more of a, well, I guess they're quite sort of punky. But they're quite sort of indie rock as well, some of their music. But it's all got that kind of... I mean, to me, when I got it back, I was like, well, this is great. Because this sounds like the closest thing to Cardiacs covering mm. Sparks. Because mm. it's got that kind of off-kilter, weird circus sound almost that... That um, Cardiacs did quite mm. a bit um, in sort of the eighties and nineties, so um, I was delighted with this because um, "Tell It Is an Asset" is one of the best songs on the album, in my opinion. And, and "Silvery" is quite a faithful version, but they mm. they really had that kind of weird circus sound that they're. I like I like all the use of vocals for. in this song. Yeah. There's kind of vocals coming in and out. So next up we have the song Complaints, which uh, has been covered by the band Chaos Monaut. Now this band contacted us as a label sometime last year because they had uh, a they they did a an EP which was one long thirty four minute <laughs> song, which was brilliant of crushing doom. It was, yeah, well, it, and very mm. psych, wasn't it? Yeah, very, yeah. yeah. You know, right up my street. To be fair, yeah, we both liked it, didn't we? <laughs> Hence the reason they're here. So they contacted us, you know, seeing if we'd be interested as a label to release it. And I, I got to admit, I did ponder it for a while. I was just trying to get my head around what to do with it because <laughs> we're a label that generally specialise in vinyl. We do CDs as well, but vinyl's kind of our thing. And I couldn't think how to get a thirty-four minute <laughs> track on a vinyl. Usually, you have two sides on a record, obviously. And we're quite particular about keeping to the, you know, maximising the sonic quality of a vinyl, not exceeding, say, 22, 23 minutes on the side of vinyl. Any more than that, and as, as you probably know, the grooves then get thinner and the quality just goes down the pan. It's like those old, do you remember those old Top of the Pops records where they used to get like an hour and a half on one record and it just kind <laughs> yes. of sounded like crap. <laughs> so, <clears throat> sadly, I had to go back to them and say, I really, really like what you've done, but I, do, I can't figure out what to do with it. I think I suggested to them maybe just release it yourselves on maybe CD or cassette would be pretty cool. If you get a chance, go on to Chaos Monaut's Bandcamp page and, and check out the 34-minute track. It's really cool. It's a proper trip. Quite doomy, quite... I don't know. It's heavy, isn't it? It's very heavy. They're, they're a very, very cool band, but... But I, I didn't want to just leave them, like, you know, just say no because I really like them and I like them as people as well. The, the email they sent was really nice. So I suggested, you know what, we've got, uh, we do have uh, this record coming out as a tribute to Sparks. I didn't know if they knew much about Sparks. But I, you could tell by listening to them that they, they were one of those bands who kind of, they're a bit left to centre. So the song was Complaints, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. How, 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 did you choose a song for them? Did they choose I a song? I think I gave them a choice of maybe two at this point. And now I actually really love what they've done with this. It's really, really, it's funny. It makes me, it just makes me smile because it's... it's punk rock, isn't it, basically? It's punk, it's, yeah. <laughs> but it's got such a lovely, young, naive... Energy to it, yeah. It just reminds mm. me of those kind of 80s punk, post-punk bands. 
So the way the way the singer Rebecca sings the song, it's almost in that kind of like, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know. I love that. It's, it's 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 like I don't care that much, and that's what's really cool about it. It's like it reminds me of those kind of po- post punk bands in the kind of mid to late seventies, that kind of like almost the sweater bands. You know, mm. uh, it's got a really nice feel about it. And I love the way she does the vocals. And then the band coming at the end, like with the kind of gang vocals, it's uh Yeah, they've really uh really changed up a bit, haven't they, as well. So it makes it because Complaints is often considered to be one of the lesser songs on the album. Um I'm glad that we've got a band that have really given it a kick up the arse and made it sound uh It's brilliant. Great great fun. No, they should be really proud of themselves. I, I think that's a really good version. Absolutely. So yeah, Black Helium, In My Family, which is track number nine. Um, this is a band I think I found, I knew the name Black Helium, from various sort of festival lineup supported slots, quite similar to um, sort of Josiah, I think, mm. in the same kind of uh, vein of music, I think, aren't they? The kind of They've got a very, you know. very good reputation, this band. And yeah, they're, they're, um, they're great, they're great. They've made this one their own, In My Family. Mm. It's very sort of psychedelic. Very sort of blissed out, and uh, yeah, I got kind a lot. Of has that kind of style to it, doesn't it? Yeah, whole, I definitely yeah. got a lot of Grateful Dead, and yeah, it's got the whole song's got a very sort of kind of loose construction to it, and the way it kind of flows from one bit to another. But it's also mm. re- the, the way it's played; it's really tight, and uh, it keeps building as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, it's very cool. It's very cool the way they've done this. It again, it's one of those versions where it, it puts a different spin on on the original. And kind of the, the, it changes the li- meaning of the lyrics, doesn't it? Really, it's, it's it's interesting how the music can do that. Yeah, it gives you a different feeling, doesn't it? So the, the, they're from London, aren't they? They are from London, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think they've also had a new release relatively recently. Um, mm. That's definitely worth checking out. We'll, again, we'll have a link to their uh, social media and their band camp in the uh, comments below. Yeah, very cool band. Very cool band. <laughs> And then last, but definitely not least, um, Bezvajelsen from Stockholm, Sweden. Is that how you pronounce it? Well, that's how I pronounce it as an English person. I'm not Swedish. I assumed that it was, the J Bez was silent. Bezvajelsen? 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 I might be wrong. We should ask them. We should. Maybe they could uh, Maybe they could let us know. I was really chuffed you managed to get um, yeah, this band. Yeah, these are, these are brilliant. Really good. Such a good band. Yeah. What they've done with this is really weird. Cause I thought we'd struggle with Equator because Equator to me felt like the the halo of flies of this album. <laughs> yeah, you know? it, well it is, isn't it? And it's it's so out there. The the original version. It's uh, it's just it's just a bit crazy. But this is brilliant. And they've turned this into like a, a almost a country and western influenced kind of. Uh, yeah, but it's also quite kind of spooky, vibe, isn't it? Yeah, it does. It's very it's, it's very mellow, very menacing. A little bit of Alice Cooper in there. Yeah, it it, it does remind me of if you were walked into a a bar in in the Wild West, you kind of hear it playing. Twin Peaksy. Twin Peaksy. Yeah, it's got all those kind of. It's very cool. Oh, it's in, very, in the very right in the right way. Their vocalist Leah, um, so I'm going to mispronounce Leah Am- Amling Alazan. <laughs> My apologies, <laughs> but Leah, you can tell she's probably got a history in what? What would you say, jazz? Jazz, soul? yeah. Um, in the very, there's a very cool jazz inflection to yeah, her vocals. Kind of a very, very quite a deep, brilliant, almost like a gravelly pitch. Yeah, to croaky. Voice. Yeah, that's. Like a husky, smoked a lot of cigarettes, kind of. Oh, I love it. Style and um, it's not like Equator that Sparks do, where it goes off into those mm. higher, higher pitched acapella bits at the end. And what she does with it is, is quite special. But the music keeps and building, doesn't it? Yeah. 
yeah. those spooky guitar lines yeah. and it's very very cool they've uh, really gone to town with the with production of it as well I think it's they, brilliant it's really such a great end to the yeah. album on the CD we've got two bonus tracks um, we'll talk briefly about those so do you want to talk about yours <laughs> so uh, this the song that the that we decided to do so I, I'm also in like a kind of pop project with our producer Josh Josh <clears throat> and we've been working on songs for a number of years we're probably going to put an album out in the next year or so called Dis and Co and we had the chance to do the song Barbecue So Barbecue and Lost and Found, they were were they the bonus tracks, did you say? Yeah, they were the they bonus B sides. Tracks. Yeah, they were B sides originally and they were bonus tracks on like the I, th I think it was the fortieth anniversary reissue of um, Right. Okay. Of the album. Were they B sides on the singles from this era? They album? were yeah, they're from this era. Um so right. I think I think first Barbecue was either on was it on Amateur Hour? The seven inch. I'm not sure. Day. I think it might have been. Yeah. So really, all I did was the vocals on this one. It was all about Josh. J Josh is a real love for '80s pop, that kind of Tango in the Night era, Fleetwood Mac, Tame Impala, those kind of very summery, almost sparkly guitar sounds mm -hmm. and summery drum drum sounds. Yeah, Josh really wants to do quite a mellow, synthy '80s version of this song. I think he's done a really good job actually. He's changed uh, some of the phrasing and the timber and the chords. It's still got the spirit of the original, hasn't it? Uh, but I, th I think it's. I think it works really well. I still. I'm still not quite sure what the song's about. I don't quite I don't understand, understand it. Part of QT. I was no. wondering whether it was about some kind of robot, robot man. Okay. Or is it a man who is a barbecue? Or is it a man who hangs around barbecues? I think I think that's more likely than a, a man who is a barbecue. Because it is barbecue. When you're when when, yeah. when you're with him, he is warm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. what what what's <laughs> that what's that saying? Yeah, indeed. I had, I had a person can be warm without being a barbecue. Yeah, and I, had, <laughs> I had visions of this kind of robotic man who doubled up as a barbecue. <laughs> I I don't know why. Um, yeah, the, the lyrics are very opaque on this one, a little bit. Yeah, so so, mm. so weird the way that Russell places his um, the words and the lyrics and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, no one else quite does the, it like them. Yeah, because he kind of has to sing the songs. The, he's given the lyrics for most of the songs, and he's got to put them all in. And the, the songs are very wordy on the whole. So yeah, it's fitting everything in. I think it's uh, when when Ron is writing, is he writing on the piano? I believe so. It yeah. kind of makes sense because yeah. yeah. you wouldn't write like that with the guitar. No, and I think that's what gives sparks that kind of weirdness. Mm -hmm. Everything's got a little bit of a, and it doesn't. The, the vocals never start and end when you think they will. Yeah, quite unlike anything else, isn't it? And the sense the sense of humour is always there. Uh, but yeah, we really enjoyed doing that one. In the snow. Addressing how much we will know But his heart cries out Barbecue tea, barbecue tea Barbecue tea, yeah, barbecue tea When you're with him, he is warm Now we weren't supposed to be on this uh, album but we we were kind of let down or not let down we had a band that were going to do another track and um, they decided to call it a day didn't they before S sadly before yeah, yeah S sad sadly, decided sadly to split they up. split up they've been was... around for a while and they uh... and there was another band we were dealing yeah. with who decided <laughs> they didn't want to do it but they didn't bother telling us yeah <laughs> yeah we kind of had another band who said yeah we'll do it and then they said no we won't that's so. always the thing with these projects However, it kind of turned out for the best because we ended up using the two. It, it was more authentic to the original record because I think we were going to have. We were going to do um, the band that split up. We we're going to do um, never turn, never your, turn back. your back on Mother Earth. Yeah, yeah which, which would have been great. Which was from the following album from from this one. It was from um, from the same year. From Propaganda for the same year. So yeah, unfortunately, our budget didn't stretch to doing Propaganda fifty years later as well <laughs> for the release. I think it's November. That's crazy, isn't it? So they had an album out in May and then another in November. They wrote, I think they wrote 
most propaganda whilst they were on tour for the for this. That's crazy, though, isn't it? Yeah. Literally six months apart. It's crazy. It's the last bonus track, the slightest bits, doing lost and found. Now the slightest bits are a band of Sparks fans, big big Sparks fans. In fact, their favourite band is Sparks. Oh right. And I found them through the, again the Sparks groups on on mm. Facebook. Um, Violet, who's the drummer in the band, she's quite active on a lot of the, the Sparks groups, and she's commented on a few things that mm. I've posted up in the past. And she friended me on Facebook and talked about Sparks. And I thought it, it would just it would be great to have because they're quite young. They're all um, in their early twenties. Really. It would be great to have like a you know next generation of Sparks fans actually on the album doing a track. <laughs> so that's quite quite encouraging, yeah. isn't it? I said to her, you know, we've got a, a space for you to do. Um, Eve, I gave them the choice of Lost and Found or Wild Cutie, and they went for Lost and Found. I, um, I understand she flew back from and she flew back from from school. Yeah, veterinary in, in, in college Thanksgiving. Yeah, just to um, come record. It's amazing. Just to record it because they wanted you know they wanted it to be on on these on the CD. It's a really good so. version. That's a great version. It's yeah, full of energy. Really good job. Really good job. Very pleased with it. Yeah, actually, it's got a lot of the spirit of Sparks, yeah. hasn't it? Certainly, you can tell they're Sparks fans. From, you can. From the track. And yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, they've got that kind of youthful exuberance. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. those days. Yeah, which hasn't yet been beaten out of them. Yeah, by the years en energy, of negativity. Yeah, <laughs> it'll come. It'll come. It'll come. So yeah, so our version of Sparks Kimono My House 50 years later out on the 1st of May. This is the vinyl version, gatefold vinyl. Um, it's full of sleeve notes. I, uh, I've also been speaking to uh, Rude Svart from the Fan Mail website. Fan Mail, um, based, he's, he's um, Dutch, based in Holland. Um, it's the biggest and best Sparks fan site on the internet. I think it used to be a fanzine mm. in pre-internet days. Mm. So it's been going for a long, long, long time. And anything you want to know about Sparks, any you know, all kinds of gig listings and uh, interviews, newspaper cuttings, everything. Mm. There's so much on there. It's a wealth of information. Mm. So I approached him to ask him to write maybe a little bit about Kimono My House, mm. putting it in context. Um, from 1974, you know what, what mm. the music scene was like, and he he came up with some words very kindly. Um, mm. And also during one of the early uh, sort of Facebook posts, I put out asking for bands that might be interested, and all this. Martin Gordon, who's the bass player, the original bass player on Kimono My House, um, contacted me. He's active in some of the Sparks fan groups as well. I said, "What's what's this then? What's this project?" <laughs> and I explained to him, you know, what we're doing. And he said, "Oh, I'd, you know, I'd keep me updated. I'd, uh, I'd like to be, you know, involved if possible." So I said, "Would, would you like to write something about your experience working on Kimono?" And he said, "I certainly would." And then sent me these uh, lovingly crafted words, which we put on the other side of the gatefold. So yeah, a lot to read for. Uh, Always nice to have sleep for, notes. For, yeah, for, for bookish kind of people. And the, the bands all have their say as well. Yeah. They, they talk about you know working on the record and stuff. Well, it's all coloured vinyls, heavyweight, one hundred and eighty gram. Yeah. It's also on Digipack CD. This one is the um, the Kickstarter exclusive one, I think. So right, okay. It's black and orange. As with all yeah, our releases, funky. there's always little nods to the original. We try to like you'll you'll notice the label is very similar to the original. Original Island label. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's not the Island label because we're no. sued. No. O everything's properly licensed. It's above board. The original publishers and songwriters get their um, what they're due. But that comes out May the 1st on Pale Wizard Records. This is a real fun one to do. I'm really, really pleased how it sounds. It's a really fun record to listen to. 